Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 14.7 to the public. This is available to all iOS 14 supported devices, so if you have an iPhone SE, an iPhone 6S, or 6S Plus and newer, you'll be able to install this update. And this is available right now everywhere around the world at the same time. If you're not seeing it, you can go to your settings, go down to general, then go to software update, and you should see it there. If you're still not seeing it, go into automatic updates, turn it off, and then check again. Then you should see the update and be able to install it. Now, this particular update came in at a very large 4.58 gigabytes. Depending on the device you have, it could be much smaller. But if you're coming from an older version of iOS, say iOS 14.5, for example, it could be a very large install like this. If you're coming from iOS 14.6, it could be about a gigabyte or so. It just depends on the device and what version you're coming from. Now, if you have iOS 14.7 RC and you're a beta tester, there will be a new build. So you'll need to install an update. You will see one. And that's sometimes typical, sometimes not, but there should be a new build for you as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. Now I'm running iOS 14.7 on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I also have it installed on the iPhone 10R and iPhone 7. Now along with this, Apple also released some other software, but so far they have not released iPadOS 14.7. It's still only available as a release candidate to developers and beta testers. We haven't seen this before. Hopefully we'll see it released within a day or so, but they haven't said why. And maybe there's some bugs in it that they need to work out. However, they did release watchOS 7.6, along with tvOS 14.7, HomePod OS 14.7, and macOS Big Sur 11.5 RC2, or Release Candidate 2 to developers. So all of those things are out. However, iPadOS not being released the same day as iPhone or iOS doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We haven't seen that before, and they're also calling it a little bit different name. iOS 14.7 FCS, or Final Candidate Software. So we haven't seen that naming before. Maybe this will be the last version of iOS 14 until iOS 15, but again, that would be different than we've seen in the past. Now let's take a look at the build number. We'll go to settings, then general, then about. You can see the build number is 18G69. And this particular build number is one digit newer than the last one that was released to developers and beta testers. So they must have found a last minute bug they needed to fix. And because of that, I'll be mentioning what's new in iPadOS 14.7 as well in this video, since this is just going to be a small last minute change and should not affect the updates overall. Now, as far as the first thing that's been updated is the modem. If you're on iOS 14.6, you'll have a new modem update that will help with connectivity. Whether that be on an iPhone 12 or older, you should see a modem update. However, if you are on iOS 14.7 release candidate, you will not see a modem update. It's the exact same. So if you were having issues with the release candidate, don't expect anything to be different as far as cellular data is concerned. Now, the first change or overall feature add is support for a brand new MagSafe battery pack for the iPhone 12 series. Apple announced this and it requires this update in order to function properly. So you'll see it's a little MagSafe battery pack. It's $99 and just magnetically adheres to the back of the iPhone. In order to charge it, you plug in your lightning cable and it will reverse wireless charge back into the battery pack. So that is added with support with iOS 14.7. So far, there's no reverse wireless charging for anything else, but just the battery pack. So that's the first update. The next thing has to do with Apple Card family. So if we go into the wallet app, you'll see that it says Apple Card family. Now this was already there before, but there's a new feature within Apple card family that Apple talked about quite a while ago that is finally added with iOS 14.7. And that's the option to combine credit limits and share one co-owned account with an existing Apple card user. So maybe you're someone that needs to build credit and you have a significant other that already has an Apple card. You can build credit sharing that, or you could share it with whoever you'd like, but it's a co-owned card and will allow you to share that credit, build your finances, and maybe just combine accounts more easily. That was promised before, and now it's here with iOS 14.7. Now the next update has to do with HomePod. So if you have a HomePod or HomePod mini, go into the home app, press and hold on your HomePod. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that we now have the option to set timers before we could set alarms, but now we can create a new timer if we want to right from the app. So instead of asking, we can now just do it directly from the app if you want to do that. So that's a new feature they've added with 14.7. Also in the weather app, 
if you're in specific countries, they've added air quality information. So air quality, if you scroll down, you'll see, we have air quality here where it says that it's good. And this has been added in Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, South Korea, and Spain. Prior to this, it was not available. So they continue to roll it out across different countries and it's available in those countries now. Now they've also updated the podcasts app as well. So if we go into podcasts and then tap on library under library, tap on shows and under shows, you'll see that it now says followed and all we now have a tab to see all of our podcasts or just those that we want to follow more closely. So maybe we have an interest to check some, we don't want to forget about them, but generally we don't listen to them. We can switch between those different views. Now they've also updated a, a few different changes throughout the OS, just different menu options and more. So there's small changes throughout with refinements, but the major change has to do with library and followed or feet followed and all. Now in iPad OS 14.7, there are no other changes other than what I've already mentioned for iOS 14.7. So you won't see any other significant changes on the iPad, just the same things that they've added, such as going into podcasts, going to library and then shows and then you'll have followed in all. So just like you do on iPhone, they're updating it the same way, but there's nothing significant or different or new as far as iPad goes compared to iPhone. So all of the same changes are there. Now, as far as resolved issues, there's quite a few of those in iOS 14.7. And the first one has to do with music. So if we go into music and then we go to library, then we go to playlists, find one of our playlists here. Maybe we'll go to recent faves and tap the three buttons in the upper right for the menu. You'll see that we have the option to share a playlist in prior versions. This could sometimes disappear. Apple has now made it so that it will show up properly. So you can now share your playlist for some reason. It just wouldn't show up in the past. Now they've also fixed an issue where Dolby Atmos and Apple music lossless audio playback could stop unexpectedly. So maybe you're using your AirPods pro and you're listening to music and it would stop after 15 seconds. This should be resolved in iOS 14.7. I know it was a problem for a lot of people. It seems to be related to Dolby Atmos and Apple music. And also a lot of people in India are saying they're seeing Dolby Atmos and Apple music lossless now as well. So that's something people were wondering when it was rolling out. Some people have been telling me they're seeing that already. Now there is an issue they fixed that's specific to the iPhone 11. So where they updated the iPhone 11 with a new battery recalibration tool with iOS 14.6 in iOS 14.7. If your battery had an issue where it needed to be replaced, there was a battery service message that may have disappeared after you rebooted the iPhone and specific to the iPhone 11 models. So iPhone 11, 11 pro and iPhone 11 pro max, that message telling you to replace the battery or service the battery could go away. Once you rebooted it, that should be present now all of the time and tell you to replace the battery if you need to do that. And it's not performing up to its peak capability. So that's fixed in this update. Now, another thing they've resolved has to do with accessibility and braille displays. Apple has said that braille displays could show invalid information when composing mail messages that's been resolved in iOS 14.7. So that's great to see they've fixed that. Now, another thing they've fixed has to do specifically with USB C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. So maybe you have a newer iPad air or an iPad pro. And when you plug it in to use your headphone jack, maybe you're using a wired headphone jack with it. Audio could skip when using this adapter or using any adapter that's USB C to 3.5 millimeter. So they've resolved that in iOS 14.7 or iPad OS 14.7 specifically. Now, another thing they've fixed that they haven't mentioned specifically has to do with a known Wi-Fi bug. If you have odd characters such as percent signs in your Wi-Fi, it could cause your network to not work properly. So I set up one of these networks. We'll give it just a moment to show up and there it is. If it has percent signs in it, we'll tap on this, wait for it to connect prior to this. It could cause your network settings not to work. Let me go ahead and enter the password and it's just Zolo tech one just so we could test this out. We'll let it connect, give it just a moment. And even if your devices were around this particular network name, it could cause an issue. So now we can go to different websites and it should work properly. Go into Apple. You'll see it's working properly in this update, but it can cause your Wi-Fi network to no longer even activate. So if we go into settings on this iPad, which is on an older version and go to network, it will not allow me to turn it on. The only way to fix this is to completely go into your settings, go to general 
reset and reset your network settings if that's a problem. So this has been resolved in iOS 14.7. They've fixed that known Wi-Fi bug. So it's great to see them do that. Now this update also includes a bunch of security updates. So if you want to see those, I'll link it in the description, but that's their security website and you can scroll down and see all of the different security updates for the different versions that are available. So I'll link that in the description if you want to look in that more detailed. Now, as far as overall performance and battery life, well, first of all, performance seems to be okay. On the iPhone 7, it seems to be working great. And throughout the betas that I've talked about in the past videos, many people have said that performance has increased significantly on older devices, whether that be an iPhone 7 like I have here or an iPhone 10 or 10R. Now, as far as iPad OS, the only place I've seen it where it's a little bit slow is on the iPad Air 2 from time to time. So going through different applications or going into music, sometimes it will be a little bit slow. It's slow to load. Sometimes it's a little bit choppy when you're scrolling and right now it's working okay, but there is a little bit of stutter. So it's not worse than iOS 14.6 or iPad OS 14.6, but it does have a little bit of slowness overall and isn't an improvement over that version. However, most people say that it's working great. As far as overall battery life, battery life seems to be much better for most people than iOS 14.6. However, it could take a few days for things to finish processing in the background for you to see that sort of update. So give it a few days for battery to improve, but I'll show you one from Cameron who sent these in and thanks for sending these along. You can see that he got as high as 12 hours and 53 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 31 minutes of screen off time. I covered this in my update, but as you can see, let's go to the next one. He got up four hours and 10 minutes of screen on time and two hours and 16 minutes of screen off time and used about 50% of his battery. Now this is on an iPhone 12 pro max and he's getting eight to 12 hours of screen on time, depending on overall use. You can see he used messages and Twitter a lot and some other apps as well. So in general, it's doing pretty well. Most people say it's much better than iOS 14.6, but like I said, give it a couple days for that to improve overall. And that leads me to, should you install iOS 14.7? Well, if you're on 14.6 or earlier, I would say absolutely. This includes important security updates and is really a refinement of what iOS 14 has been all along. Last year, when we got to iOS 13.7, we saw a huge improvement overall to performance, to battery life, and just general stability. And this seems to have those improvements just like last year. There are some things that are not fixed, such as green tint. Some people have seen improvements in it overall, but for the most part, there's no specific improvements to green tint that they've mentioned. So we'll have to wait for a future update for that. And it took Apple last year into mid to late August to release an update to fix it on the iPhone 11 pro and iPhone 11 pro max. So I wouldn't really expect this to fix it for you. Although people are saying it has improved over time. It is not fixed specifically in this update. At least they don't mention it. Now, as far as those running iOS 15 betas and wanting to know when iOS 15 beta four will come out, I would expect that as soon as maybe another week or so. So probably on Wednesday, the 28th of July seems to be about when they should release it in a two week cycle. Every couple of weeks, they'll release updates until we get to August. We'll see a week to week schedule with a final release sometime in mid to late September. So that's when you can expect that update. Now, whether or not we see additional iOS 14 updates up until the release of iOS 15 is always something that Apple does seem to do, but we will have to wait and see if they release those updates as well. However, don't expect any changes or any major physical updates with iOS 14 updates in the future. Usually they focus on stability and security. Now, as far as the major changes that will be with iOS 15, when they launch that usually around the time of iPhone 13 or iPhone 12 S, whatever Apple decides to call that. So with the next iPhone, you should see that release just a little bit before the next iPhone release. So we see the next iOS update, then the iPhone that comes with that pre-installed. So I'm looking forward to all of those things coming very, very soon, just a couple of months away at this point. So that's it for iOS 14.7. It's nice to see Apple continue to refine iOS 14, even though iOS 15 is coming very soon. So we have some new security updates, feature changes and refinements overall, but we're all looking forward to iOS 15, which should release sometime in mid to late September, if Apple continues to do what they normally 
normally do. Now, usually from this time until the release of the next version, we will see either a one small release or maybe another beta with iOS 14 updates as Apple continues to fix that as well. So we'll have to wait and see what they do there. And of course, I'll keep you updated as soon as I know more about that. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.